the area of land drained by a river. Watershed, the edge of highland surrounding a drainage basin. It marks a boundary between two drainage basins. Source, the point at which a river starts. Confluence, the point at which two rivers or streams join. Tributary, when a river joins a larger river. Mouth, the point where the river comes to an end, usually when entering the sea. In the upper course of a river, there is lots of vertical erosion with hydraulic action, abrasion and attrition dominant processes. There is traction and saltation at high flow, load size is large and angular, and there are V-shaped valleys. In the middle course, the channel is deeper and wider, vertical erosion is decreasing in importance, more lateral erosion and deposition. Suspension is the main transportation type. Load becomes smaller and less angular. In the lower course, channel is at its widest and deepest, and may be tidal. Deposition more important than erosion. Fine material deposited. Large amounts of load, but the size is very small and very rounded. Long profile is a changing gradient with distance. It starts off steep but reduces with distance from source and has a concave profile. Erosion is the wearing away of land. Most erosion occurs during flooding. There are four main types of erosion. Attrition, material is moved along the riverbed, it collides with other material and breaks into smaller pieces. Abrasion, eroded rocks that rub against the riverbed, wearing it away. Solution, soluble particles such as limestone and chalk, which are dissolved in the river's water. Hydraulic action, when water forces air into rocks, which breaks them apart. Vertical types of erosion wear the riverbed downwards, deepening the valley, and lateral types of erosion wear the riverbed outwards, laterally, thus widening the valley. Transportation. Rivers pick up and carry material as they flow downstream. There are four different river transport processes. Solution. Minerals are dissolved in the water and carried along in solution. Suspension. Small particles are suspended in the water. Saltation. Small pebbles and stones are bounced along the riverbed. Traction. When boulders are rolled across the riverbed. Deposition. Rivers need energy to transport material, and the levels of energy change as the river moves from source to mouth. When energy levels are very high, large rocks and boulders can be transported. Energy levels are usually higher near a river's source when its course is steep and its valley narrow. Energy levels rise even higher during times of flood. When energy levels are low, only small particles can be transported, if any. Energy levels are lowest when velocity drops as a river enters a lake or sea at the mouth. When a river loses energy, it will drop or deposit some of the material it is carrying. Deposition may take place when a river enters an area of shallow water or when the volume of water decreases, for example, after a flood or during times of drought. Deposition is common towards the end of a river's journey at the mouth. Deposition at the mouth of a river can form deltas, for example, the Mississippi Delta. There are some different types of river landforms. Landforms that are formed only by erosion are waterfalls and gorges. Landforms that are formed by erosion and deposition are meanders and oxbow lakes. Landforms are formed by deposition are floodplains and levees. Waterfalls are formed when a band of harder rock lies on top of a band of softer rock and the softer rock gets worn away more easily than the harder rock. This leaves the harder rock unsupported. The hard rock then collapses into a plunge pool and the process starts all over again. Over time the waterfall retreats upstream and a steep sided gorge will be left behind. In an examination you should write that the waterfall will retreat unless the question is asking you on how a gorge forms. A meander is formed when a river bends round an obstacle. The bend develops and the meander grows wider by lateral erosion and deposition. Lateral erosion forms a river cliff on the meander and deposition can form a slip off slope. 
Meanders can get larger over time, meaning they can eventually turn into an oxbow lake. Erosion causes the outside bends to get closer, mainly by hydraulic action and abrasion, until there is only a small bit of land left between the bends, called the neck. The river breaks through the land, usually during a time of flooding, and the river always follows the shortest course. Deposition cut eventually cuts off the meander, forming an oxbow lake. In the lower course of a river, levees can form. These are natural embankments along the edge of a river channel. During a flood, the heaviest eroded material is deposited closest to the river channel, as the river loses energy and can no longer carry it. Floodplains can form when a river floods, the water slows down and deposits all the alluvium that's been transported over the area that it has flooded, which raises the floodplain. There are seven factors that can affect river discharge. These are amount of precipitation, type of precipitation, previous weather conditions, temperature, land use, relief, and rock type.